Good. Here's the thing. Quite often we have too many people They come to Jesus That's what they receive the gift of salvation Grace is available to them But they're still bound up Because they're overcome by their grief They're overcome by their sorrow They're overcome by things that Jesus says You were not meant to bear them That's why I went to the cross And you're going to have to Amen. put them things down Those things that were in the past Are in the past You've got a bright yeah. new future. I'm here to tell you today. There's a bright new hope. Yes. There's a bright new life. Yes. If you would just embrace the, the, the embodiment of Jesus. Uh, mm. And it doesn't mean that you're always going to feel good about everything that's going on. Amen. What it does mean is that you know that you're not going to go through the valley of the shadow of death by yourself anymore. Amen. Come on now. Why? Because he's going to be with you. And you're going to trust Jesus. him. Right. Can Jesus. somebody say amen? amen. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Turn your name and say, I've been defeated way too long. I've been defeated way too long. I've been cast out, knocked down, kicked to the curb. But I'm not going to stay here. Because I'm a child of God. And I believe that the Spirit of God dwells within me. Come on, it's not just something that just comes and just touches you and gives you little goosebumps. No, it's not. And that's a, most, a, a majority of that I have found in my experience is emotion. Don't worry about it. God can use your emotion. Come on. But don't be overwhelmed and don't be driven by emotion. You want to be guided by the Spirit, and not just any Spirit, but the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know that too many of us, we're still, listen, we're still not down, and we're acting as if we're not out. And maybe we are. Maybe you've been not spiritually unconscious. To where you're not even aware what God expects. To where everything, everything is, is built upon how you feel, how circumstances are worked out. Don't, don't get me. Listen, the Bible talks, and you need to read the, the before and the after part of this verse. The Bible says that all things work together for good. Amen. Now, if I just laid that out there, that's only part of the truth. So you've got to read the, the before and the after because there's some significant truth that Amen. that truth is bracketed in between. Without one, you don't have the other. Amen. Because it tells them and who it's talking to. It's, called, it's talking to people of like precious faith. It's, called, it's, it's talking to people who have called upon his name. And he, listen, because they heard him. Amen. And now they hear him. Amen. It's, it's, it's spoken to people who are called according to his purpose. love him. Amen. And to love him is to do nothing more or less than to obey him. Not, not just, now you're not blind, and you're not deaf, you're not dumb, no. We, we obey him because we see where he's leading. Amen. And we say, well, that makes perfect sense. Sometimes, wait, wait now, sometimes things don't seem to make sense. We don't see the sense until after. Just, just like the story we saw in the video we showed before church this morning. The, the guy had a dream, and to him it was just a dream. Just like the testimony I shared with a friend of mine who was like the man in the video. And he had a dream that never manifested in his own flesh, but he got to see it manifest in the flesh of his children. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, you've got to understand this, and I know uh, for a long, long time I, I heard as the you know, children are, are, the, are the hope for the world, right? Let me tell you what, that's, that's partly true. Children, our children without the Lord will be helpless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. But if our children are raised in the way that they should go, they will be the hope for tomorrow. Amen. And they will be help for today. Yes. What has to happen is that we have to become help for them. Somebody say, I'm going to share Jesus. What does that look like? Does that mean that I just preach it somebody, something that I myself is not living? Does that mean I say, you know, it's good? Hey, listen, I'm going to preach this and do as I say, not as I do. No, I'm not going to be saying that. Because it doesn't work like that. We have to 
come to a place where we realize that God has a greater plan for us. Yes. The Word of God tells us the Old and New Testament. Number one, in Jeremiah, he says, uh, he says this. He says, uh, I've got a plan for you. I have a, an expected end for you. I have a plan. Amen? Amen. Amen. Take that away. Very much better. Praise yeah, God. Then I don't have to talk so loud. <laughs> I can sing better. Because God's got a plan for me. Amen. What would it be like? What would it be like for you? I mean, it's going to be different for different people. In the Bible, we hear about this guy. He, he said it, it would be like fire shut up in his bones. He, listen, he had to preach. He, whatever God told me, he had to share. You know, when we come to loving Jesus the way he loves us, we've got to share it with somebody. Amen. Amen. Everyone. And you, you, you get this. It's got to be something that's working in your life. You don't have to be perfect. It was a sister Margaret that said that. I heard sister Linda say it different times. You know, uh, you don't have to have it all together. I will say this. Let's be in the process of getting it together. Amen. Because <laughs> if you're going to sit there and wait till you get it all together, no, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's like coming to dinner and expecting the food to just jump into your mouth. Well, it's going to happen. Put it in your mouth, you're going to have to chew it. And then let the body do the work. It's like we, we, we think that these things are just going to be automatic. We think that all we have to do is wish and have dreams. So let me tell you, you've got to respond to the Word of God. Amen. If my people who are called by my name would what? Humble themselves. Humble themselves. What does that even look like? Let me tell you what it doesn't look like. It doesn't look like a sitting at home, pouting because things aren't going our way. Listen, I'm an American. I believe in I believe in the American way. Vote. Otherwise, shut your mouth. Yeah. Well, seriously. And I'm also, listen, I'm a Christian. And I believe in the Christian way. Amen. Tell about Jesus. Praise him. Tell about Jesus. Praise him. And if you can't tell about Jesus, you might as well ask yourself why you can't tell about Jesus. You might be sitting here today and somebody might be listening in or something and they say, well, you know, I, I, I really don't know much about Jesus because I haven't read the Bible. And did you know that all, all of creation declares his glory? And I don't think that, I don't think one, I don't think one tree ever read the Bible. Although I think a lot of trees gave up their lives so we can the Bible. Come on now. Not to make light of it, but understand this. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. To hear Jesus. Amen. But it does help if you can be around some people that can lead you in the way that you should go. It does help if you if you humble yourself and say, you know what? I read this, but I you know I'm, I really am not really sure how it applies. I don't want, I don't know how to do this. And we don't know how to do it because it's alien to us, because it's not something that would come natural. There's some, there's a something else within us, there's something that we're made of that makes us want to go a different direction. That's why we need to be born again. Amen. Something went wrong. You know, the Apostle Paul talked about his past life. He said, you know my past life? It's in the toilet. Someone said, where does it say that? <laughs> well, most people would get that better than, well, you know, I consider all my all my past things as dumb. Then how many of you get it if I say it's in the toilet? Listen, maybe what we need to do is maybe we need to have a, a service whereby we uh, we all go and we just decide to flip that little lever on our backs. Last I checked, nobody's going to get that. It's going down. But how many of you know that we need to remember what was flushed? You see, the Bible says that it's a wise man that remembers what he was delivered from. You want to know why it's wise to remember what you deliver from? So you don't go to it again. 
so you can recognize. You know what, Brother Mike? Uh, I've got this habit, and I seem to be getting back into it. It is so easy. Remember a few weeks ago, it's so easy. When, when, when they've been that buyout, when Jesus has come and there's new, a new leadership in your life. It's so easy for us to drift back into the old habits and the old ways where the new ways seem daily. I want to encourage you today to give the new way a chance. And for those of you who walk in the way, I want to encourage you to help those in the way. So that they can have a chance. Amen. You don't have to have it all together. The goal is for us to get together. The goal is for us to be fitly joined together. And it is of each one helping one. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. place and prepare to receive an offering. I also want to uh, say thanks to anyone who uh, had, had come last week and uh, not only participated but they contributed to the cause. Because everybody was hungry and I don't think anybody went home uh, without uh, without having something good to eat. You know? yum, yum, yum. And uh, there were some I had a few friends that had come out, and they're still talking about it as of yesterday. And I said, well, you know, uh, you, you can probably come and visit us on other Sundays, if you like, although they travel for many miles to get here. I said, that's okay, we'll feed you before we send you back home. Amen. <laughs> but uh, it was a great day, and it's a great day today. Somebody say amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice to be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I, I will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I'm glad to be here today. And I think Amen. many of you here would agree. Aren't you glad to be able to be part of what's going on? Amen. And Amen. also to make a contribution uh, in, to the same cause. Sister Linda, would you pray? Father, we thank you again, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house, oh, Father. And we pray, Father, for those this morning that have to give in this offering that, Lord, you would bless them. Bless those that have not, that, Lord, you would bless them the next time to be able to give. And I just pray that you use this offering to further your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, those are coming through in uh, March. <laughs> um, lost my thought there for just a moment, but I'll get back again. Get back again. Start it up. I, uh, I have, obviously, I have some things to share with you today. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm afraid to preach. didn't have nothing to preach. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Show, show. Okay. I was, uh, actually, in regard to that, I was speaking to uh, uh, a minister this week, and I was really, really surprised that uh, he had mentioned that he had retired. I said, you retired? And uh, when he started telling me what had gone on, I was really surprised. I said, yeah, I just read out the material. I said, what? But anyway, they, you know, they used to be a cultural thing. I don't know how it is. How can you run out of the material? And, and the conversation we had, I'm hoping that he was, uh, if not provoked, if, if really not inspired, at least provoked. Uh, because one of the things that I shared with him, I said, you know, maybe it's because you lost touch with the living. Um, well, I promise you that there's plenty of material. First off, there's plenty of material in God's Word. Somebody say amen. amen. I mean, I don't care how many times you read that book. There's always something new, something appears. But here's the other thing. Too. If you start living it, there's never an end of resource. How many of you know that he is an, un listen, he is an unending, he's an endless resource? Amen. Look good, Bryson. Thank you. Yeah. You're not little anymore. I don't know. Anyhow. So, um. Uh, in a sense, so here you have a minister who's not ministering, more or less. And, that, and actually, the reason I had talked with him is because of this. No, uh, the problem I have is that you are ministering. What's that? Well, uh, when, where is it, you know, are we taught? And how do we learn 
that we have the right just to quit. And so Thursday, I, I had a little thing that I was saying. I said, and because he said, well, how is it you keep going? I said, I didn't, listen, I don't quit because Jesus never quit. Amen. I don't quit because he didn't. And we've got to understand something. The, the, and I hope that I spoke to the words of wisdom in the right way to him, the, that he'll actually take it to heart. Because what happens is many of us, we've sat down on God. We've been called into ministry. And what do we do? Sit down. Now, don't get me wrong. Not everybody's been called to the same ministry. Not everybody's, not everybody's been called to teach at that level. Amen. Now, babe, now some, some of you might want to sing and just, you know, if you're better off, just not. Amen. But do it anyway. I'm not discouraging you. Do it anyway. I'm just telling you, you probably won't be part of the crowd. Of, uh, although, if you wanted to sing from your heart, listen, no, just like that video we showed you earlier, nobody better laugh. That's all I'm telling you. Unless we're laughing with you. Yeah, I, I'm kind of reminded of, 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 of what where the world has gone. You know, there was a time, and some of you might remember this, you know, we could make fun of each other and nobody really got offended. But today you've got to be so careful. You've got to be careful. You don't want to offend anybody. My goodness, they'll, they'll, they'll not like you. Worse yet, they might, they might want to do you harm. And, and that kind of leads me to where I'm going to be going today. Um, open your Bibles to John chapter 4. I'll give you a chance to get there. And uh, but before I share too much more, I want to go to the Lord with you and pray. Um, remember, uh, obviously remember Sister Robin for her continued healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, and then uh, Peyton Hollis, uh, his first day of football was, my, I don't know if it's his last day for the season. <laughs> he, going, out of, going out of the field, something happened. Didn't make it to the field, broke his arm. Oh, no. Not good. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it was a sad day for for him, for sure. But mom and dad as well, um, and, and and also for uh, well for my, my daughter Ashley, continue healing, and uh, my daughter Brittany and, and, and Mark. They're down in Ohio, otherwise they probably wouldn't be here today. Most likely to see. So remember these people to pray. I mean, I can go down the list. And anybody who's not here, here's the thing: don't just pray for them. Yeah, don't just pray for them. Go witness to them. Go share Jesus with them. See that attitude that so, so many people have had, well, if they really love Jesus, then they would be in. Well, there's some truth to that. But the, the, the other truth is, is, is just maybe even more prevalent. If you really love Jesus, you'd go to them. If you really love Jesus, you wouldn't let them stay there. The Bible says that you who are spiritual, when you see somebody who's kind of caught up in something, that's keeping, listen, that's keeping them out of where they ought to be, you should go to them. Well, I'm afraid that they might say something and hurt my feelings. What? What message are we preaching to them? It's no different than this minister I just told you about when he stepped out of the pulpit. And I say prematurely. We ain't out of material. Let me, let me tell you what it came down to here. What it came down to is it was just more than he could bear. Because he was bearing it by himself. Amen. Doesn't work that way. How many of you know we're not supposed to? Listen, the Bible says that we are to share one another's what? Burdens. Amen? That's what we need. We need to learn how to, how to recognize someone who is carrying a burden. We need to start recognizing when somebody is bound up in something, whether you know whether it's some sort of blatant sin or just something in that in their life that's got them bound up and, and keeping them from the freedom that they listen. That they may not deserve it, but Jesus does. How many know that Jesus deserves that you have freedom? Amen. Amen. Remember the buyout. Remember the buyout. He paid the price. <laughs> Just so you know you've not been bought off. You, you, there's been a payout. Amen. In your name. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise praise the Lord. Lord. Which brings me to what I'm talking about today. What I've what so, uh, it's been mulling over in my mind for well, quite some time. And, and last week was just kind of a, a precursor to it. Because today I want to talk to you about sharing Jesus with others. And, and you know... Uh, if you don't have to go very far, you, you, you know, it's certainly today with the internet and stuff, but you can read a magazine, you can, you can look at all kinds of statistics, but here's what I know. There are probably something in the neighborhood of about 2,000 unique people groups in the world which 
not only have not heard the gospel, but also have never been, uh, have, have never yet been engaged by the gospel. You know, add to that billions of people who, in spite of belonging to people groups which have been reached, they still have not heard the gospel and, and, the, and the task of making sure everyone has at least one chance to hear the gospel, it seems overwhelming because of the numbers. I'm just one person. It's just, I'm just one person. You know, there was a story in the Bible about this prophet, and you know, he was hiding in the caves because he felt he was the only he was the only prophet left living. And uh, <laughs> the angel came to him and said, what are you doing in here? He says, well, you know, I'm the only one left and we killed all the others. Anybody know what happened when he came out of that cave? What did he find out? What's that? He wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. He was only alone because he chose to be alone. Hello? And I'm here to tell you that that is something that is not of God. And for those who refuse the fellowship, they're not of God. Well, I can get my I can get my dose of uh, of gospel on gospeltv.com or <laughs> or my favorite my favorite uh, TV evangelist. I can get no, you can't. You just so you know, I can get some stuff from there too. I like listening to other preachers. Amen. Amen. Yes. But you know what I like better? I like fellowship with the saints. Amen. I heard, I learned a whole lot more there. <laughs> So when we talk about some things, about sharing the gospel, I want to I kind of lay some things down because unfortunately, I'm just going to tell you, a majority of our church is ignorant when it comes to two things, missions and evangelism. And it's by choice. It's by choice we have chosen to be ignorant. Why? Well, because we're trying to be politically correct. You know, in good politics, here's what you can say. Plausible deniability. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know it was my responsibility. I didn't know how this. I didn't know how that. You know, many of us have to come to agree that when you were born, there's a lot of things you did not know until somebody taught you. Come on now. Amen. And get this. In some cases, in some areas, no matter how much teaching is done, you just can't get it. Somebody say amen. amen. Just so you know, I still can't make 